Hello everyone, welcome back. We are here for the Victory Road Circuit Winter Series Grand Finals, uh, showcasing today the top 16 players that have made it all the way through the last five qualifiers to make it here into, uh, with the most points, into the Grand Finals. My name is Ben Kiriako, I'm joined here by my fabulous co-commentator, I've pointed the wrong way there, Jamie boy. Uh, and we are really looking forward to getting into this second round of the event. Uh, but before we kick that off, I just want to make a quick note from the last game. Uh, that was an absolutely brilliant game too there. Went down to the wire uh, in a, a little bit of a slower fashion to what we usually see, Jamie. Tell us a little bit about that. So it's not often that you get such an interesting interactions or so many interactions in such a story end game where you were down to one Pokemon left that can't break through each other. But there were so many things that could have happened. There was the yawn in place that stopped the Paragon 2 from being able to move. It could have been ice beam freezes. There was uh, who's going to be, be recovering at the right points and ended up coming down to just percentage HP at the end. So actually quite an interesting end game that could that was very slow, but still very interesting. Definitely, and uh, down to the wire in a, a bit more of an unconventional way, uh, certainly in this format with some more unconventional Pokemon. Uh, maybe we'll see a little bit more of that going into the players, but we are ready to showcase the next two players in your top 16 bracket today. Uh, today we have, or this round, should I say, we have Guillermo Castilla uh, versus Michael D'Angelo, and uh, Guillermo is someone that, I really like seeing on stream, uh, you can see on the achievements there below, uh, some achievements in 2011, some achievements in 2012, uh, a little bit of a gap there between uh, 2012 and 2020 uh, when we saw him in the Bochum Regional Championships. Uh, so, you know, he is a great player with a long, long history of VGC. Yeah, and, and still coming back strong with the with the Bochum Regional Championship win, uh, the very first regional of the of the uh, Generation Eight format, the sword on the Sword and Shield. He's going to be rocking that Zashian as his restricted choice, uh, paired with that Dragapult, uh, wanting to make use of those Phantasm drops from the Dragapult as well. It's quite mm. quite an interesting team coming out from Guillermo here, and he's going to be facing against Mike D'Angelo, and he's going to be uh, the re re a representative here from the United States, uh, going to be rocking that colossal team that he's been using so often throughout these tournaments, uh, able to use that team to qualify for the the grand finals of the players cup three as well uh, some very good accomplishment as well as getting to, to the, the finals of one of the qualifiers and, and another top eight as well are going to still still be rocking that zashian as well so two zashians going to be facing off against each other in this second game yeah, exactly, and uh, potentially using that Dragapult in the same way as uh, Guillermo to use those Max Phantasms, but also potentially a little bit of Surf action going on uh, to uh, make sure that that Colossal gets a boost uh, alongside that Urshifu usually carrying something like an Aqua Jet to make sure that Colossal uh, does what it does best uh, and go really fast and hit really hard and uh, use the effect of that G-Max Volcalith. Uh, to make sure it's putting maximum pressure on their opponent's side of the field. Uh, so here we are. We're going into team preview right now. Uh, we have Guillermo, whose perspective we will be seeing during the match, uh, versus Michael D'Angelo. Uh, and just a quick rundown, uh, just in case you missed it, we have Gastrodon, Rillaboom, uh, Dragapult, Zashian, Rotom, Heatform, and Grimmsnarl on Guillermo's side of the field. And Michael is going to be rocking that. Uh, Colossal, Dragapult, Amoongus, Urshifu, Incineroar, and Zashin. So Gastrodon's going to be a really good pick here going into, into the team against my, the team Michael's running. You've got the, the Gastrodon to be able to redirect the Aqua Jets that come out from the Urshifu so that you wouldn't be mm. able to proc the, the weakest policy in the Steam Engine that way. And it would if it would have to be a Surf coming out from the Dragapult, and then if you go for a Surf, you're giving a special attack boost to the Gastrodon. And it's able to resist the, the Volcalith that will come out from the Colossal. It's even able to resist mm. the, the Steel move, the, the Behemoth Blade coming out from the Zashian as well. So actually a really nice pick for the Gastrodon from Guillermo's side. So Michael's going to have to rely on some some other Pokemon maybe to break through that Gastrodon. You know, we've commonly seen Soda Beam be dropped uh, on Colossals now, opting for Earth Power more recently in this Series 8. So uh, if the Colossal doesn't have access to that overgrowth, it's going to have a really hard time breaking through this Gastrodon. May need to rely on something like that Dragapult uh, to be able to deal with the Gastrodon, since the Dragapult does pair quite nicely against the Gastrodon, being able to stack those the defense drops with the Max Phantasm and then allow the something like the Zashin to be able to do a huge amount of damage. 
Indeed, and a huge amount of that damage is what these uh, Zashians really like to be doing with their boosting uh, attack stat from their abilities. Uh, but we are going into turn one now. Uh, we're going to see that Dragapult and Colossal combination that you were mentioning in team preview there. Uh, clearly the setup of choice here. But of course, we're going to see Dragapult on uh, Guillermo's side of the field. Uh, paired with that Zashian who's just getting that raised stage of attack here uh, and going to be putting a lot of pressure onto uh, Michael's side of the field. Yeah, so now we're in this awkward interaction the, with the Dragapults on both sides of the field. There's no focus sash on either side of the field, then uh, the Dragapults could be threatening a KO on both of them. Uh, the Dragapult would be, would be, uh, we'd need to be able to get off that Surf onto the Colossal as well. Mm. So the Colossal could outspeed the Zashin and the Dragapult. Uh, you would assume that uh, most Zashins paired with Dragapults do tend to underspeed the Dragapults, so you can make use of those Phantasm drops. But we are going to get Dynamax straight away, so uh, maybe that Colossal going for, for the Gig Gigantamax on Michael's side of the field to try and get that Volcalith going, uh, maybe going for that Surf on the Dragapult as well, and it is going to be that Colossal, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a Surf come out from the Dragapult from Michael's side. Yeah, well, we'll see soon enough as uh, that Colossal does indeed go into its uh, Gigantamax form and uh, probably going to be wanting to go fairly quickly afterwards, but we do see the Behemoth Blade coming out from the Zashian, uh, going to be targeting down into the Dragapult on Michael's side of the field. Will it pick up the KO? Yes, it does. No setup at all for that Colossal. Uh, Dragapult just goes straight down, so uh, not quite the same speed interaction as we predicted earlier this round. Uh, and two Dragon Darts go into that Colossal, uh, doing a little bit of chip damage, and of course, that Colossal will be replying with a max player into the Zashian. I'm probably expecting that to be going before the Zashian uh, was able to attack. Uh, wanted it to be boosted by its potential weakness policy, but Zashian takes it like a champ and uh, still is maintaining all of that pressure on Guillermo's side of the field. Very good turn for Guillermo there. Opting for a Zashian that is faster than a Dragapult did pay off here. Not going to be able to make use of the Phantasm drops on the same turn from his own Dragapult, but able to outspeed opposing Dragapults and knock them out in one shot. And no focus sash on the on the on the Dragapult on Michael's side means that there was no Surf coming out. And now this Colossal is going to stuck, be stuck without its increased stages of special attack and without its massive speed boost. So it is going to be under speeding both of these Pokemon once again. And maybe this is going to be able to redirect at least. Mm. It will be able to mm. redirect. That behemoth blade away from the colossal uh, so that it will be able to at least fire off one more attack uh, maybe be able to get off that that Volcalith. even without the increased stages of special attack you would still be able to get that residual damage uh, going with the Volcalith. so the Mungus most likely wanting to redirect that behemoth blade away uh, so that the colossal can get that Volcalith going yeah, and we'll see here what these players decide to uh, go for, of course. It uh, could be that the Amoongus decides to just protect itself. Uh, maybe uh, take advantage of uh, Guillermo going for uh, a different targeting than maybe uh, would be optimal. But we do see Guillermo going straight for the Dynamax here. It's going to be that Dragapult because the Zashian isn't able to go into a Dynamax form. Uh, going big here and probably going to be launching off some big attacks, wanting to maybe try to knock out that Amoongus. Uh, if it does Rage Powder before um, any other moves go off. So uh, we'll have to see that Rage Powder coming out from the Amoongus. Going to be redirecting all uh, attacks into it and all attacks on the field at the moment are single target. So that Colossal is going to be very, very safe uh, as Behemoth Blade comes from the Zashian into the Amoongus. Definitely not enough to pick up the KO here. So Amoongus going to be providing... Uh, Michael max max value here uh, as it seems to have eaten a berry there I'm not sure quite what that interaction was uh, but the max airstream is going to be going into the Amoongus always going to be enough to pick up the knockout there maybe that was a cobra berry that we saw just a second ago um, and it is going to be returning to its trainer of course Michael's Colossal is still going to be able to attack this turn it is that G-Max Volcalyph going into the Dragapult, so going to be doing respectable damage there. But most importantly, quite a nice interaction here, going to be able to dis uh, knock out that Zashian without actually targeting it because of the residual damage coming at the end of the turn from G-Max Volcalyph. 
So yeah, so still quite a nice turn from Michael coming out here. Unfortunately, the Cobra Berry not able to save the Amoongus. Would have been nice to be able to redirect another move from that Dragapult. But now Michael is down to his final two Pokemon. Gastrodon is a Pokemon that Guillermo has brought to this match. Uh, it's, going to, it's going to be that Zacian uh, for Michael's side. So we'll have to see if Michael's decided to train his Zacian faster than the Dragapult as well. If it has, it'll be able to take out that Dragapult before it's able to fire up another attack. Uh, but Gastrodon facing down Zacian and Colossal is in a very nice position here because it's not threatened by either Pokemon unless that Colossal mm. has opted to carry that Soda Beam so that it has access to the Max Overgrowth. Uh, would be able to survive any of the attacks that the Dragapult would want to go for this turn. And we'll have to see if it's going to outspeed the, the Gastrodon as well because it didn't able to, it wasn't able to get that steam engine. Uh, but Colossus are tending to run uh, much faster than the Gastrodon, so maybe able to get off another attack into the Dragapult as well. Uh, we'll have to see if the Zacian's carrying Substitute as well, if it wants to go for Substitute uh, to try and bypass any of the, the Dragapult's attacks or the Gastrodon's Earth powers that it could be throwing out, but Gastrodon looks like in, to be in a very good position here. Yeah, I think uh, water typing is is a very good uh, thing at the moment these days, uh, both for resisting that behemoth blade, but also being able to do max damage to things like Colossal. Uh, we will see a max airstream coming out from the Dragapult, so maybe wanting to raise the speed of that uh, Gastrodon to make sure that it's going to be going uh, before the Colossal, if it is indeed, as you mentioned, Jamie, going to be trained to be as fast as it can be. Uh, we are going to see the behemoth blade coming out from uh, Michael's uh, Zashian, so a uh, difference in training here of how the two Zashians are pairing up, and of course, is going to be enough with that secondary effect, doing double damage to Dynamax Pokemon to knock out that Dragapult in one hit. Uh, so Zashian doing Zashian things here, but Gastrodon does go for that Earth Power, uh, does is able to knock out the Colossal here. So fantastic, fantastic turn here for Guillermo. Had to trade a little bit of damage, but does end up with Gastrodon versus Zashian, uh, and that is somewhere you definitely want to be. Yeah, and if you have that Rotom waiting in the back as well, you're looking very good against the Zashian, and it is actually going to be that Rotom, so uh, Guillermo in a very nice position to be able to take care of this Zashian, with both Gastron and the Rotom being able to resist uh, that Behemoth Blade that come out. Uh, the, the commonly carry a fighting move on the Zashian that will still be able to do some good damage, but uh, yeah, the, at this point, the, the Gastron and the Rotom should be able to take care of this Zashian. You just need to land an overheat in the sun to be able to KO it, and even if you don't manage, mm. not, don't manage to connect with that, two Earth Powers are probably going to be enough to KO this Zashian. So, um, very well managed from Guillermo. Being able to have that faster Zashian uh, to be able to take care of the Dragapult immediately was very crucial. And then getting that airstream as well uh, before on, onto that Amoongus so that it could guarantee outspeed that Zashian. Uh, so, yeah, very, very nice play coming out from this from the Guillermo side of the field. Certainly is, as we see an attack going into Gastron there. Uh, opting for the Thunderbolt from the Rotom, just wanting to prioritize accuracy over damage. And of course, that Earth Power comes out from the Gastrodon. Uh, unfortunately, not enough to take out the KO this time. Uh, does get a special defense drop, but not really likely to matter because uh, now with the health that the Zashian has left, uh, going to be able to be knocked out by either this Gastrodon or the Rotom. And of course, Zashian not known for hitting two Pokemon at once. Uh, certainly not with any moves uh, that are able to knock out this uh, these two Pokemon on Guillermo's side of the field. Yeah, so the Zashian just protecting there, trying to knock out the Gastrodon with the Volcalith chip, uh, but unfortunately Guillermo saw through that and just going for the recover instead, so it won't be KO'd by that Volcalith at the end of the turn, and we'll still be able to just go for two attacks to KO the Zashian. Yeah, indeed, and uh, it looks like... Uh, you know, it, Michael's going to be able to take a little bit of time here as well, uh, decide on how he wants to reapproach game two. Uh, looks like Guillermo's going to be taking it home this uh, in this turn, uh, unless Michael decides to go for a double protect and uh, just stall it out a little bit longer, just so he has a bit more time to decide on what his game plan is. But uh, looking. As I say, like, Guillermo's going to uh, be taking the knockout here. We see Sacred Sword, I believe, coming out from that Zashian into the Rotom, not picking up the KO, but there it is. The Thunderbolt comes out from the Rotom and does knock out the Zashian. So that is your first game to Guillermo. Yeah, so very crucial running the, the Zashian as fast as, as Guillermo has. Uh, being able to stop any any Cess coming out from the Dragapult, really crucial. Mm. Really limiting the damage output from the Colossal and also the speed as well. If you get the Surf off, you're going to be outspeeding the Dragapult. You're going to be outspeeding the Zashian. Uh, you would have KO'd the Zashian immediately with a Max Flare because of the increased stages of Special Attack because of the Weakness Policy. And then you wouldn't have even lost your Dragapult to that Behemoth Blade. Uh, you would have still have taken that Dragon Dots, but probably not enough to KO the, the Dragapult and you would have been in a very good position. So... Uh, re 
yeah. simple assumption that the Zashin would underspeed the Dragapult on Guillermo's side of the field. You very commonly run it slightly slower than Dragapults, just so if you're running your own Dragapults, so you can make use of the Phantasm mm -hmm. drops. Uh, but the choice of running it faster than Dragapults to get the jump on uh, opposing Dragapults, a really good choice for Guillermo here. Yeah, indeed. And I think that's the decision that you have to make when you're coming into these tournaments. Uh, if you think you're going to be seeing quite a lot of this Dragapult uh, colossal combination, uh, you can make different decisions as to how you want to maybe go into uh, your more uh, conventional tournament where there's lots of rounds, lots of different players. You don't know quite how the field is going to react. So maybe you want to take advantage of something like that Max Phantasm. Uh, followed up by an attack from Zashian, but I really like how uh, Guillermo has made that decision uh, to work so well, because as we sort of implied before, uh, it would have been a totally different game, totally different if uh, that surf was able to go off from uh, Michael's uh, Colossal. So uh, going back to uh, where we're going into now, which is game two, uh, Jamie, what, inter what different decisions do you think Michael needs to make in order to uh, pull back this game too. It's really awkward. The the way of setting up the, the Colossal is either the Surf or the Aqua Jet. The Surf isn't an option anymore because the Zashian does outspeed the Dragapult and can just knock it out immediately. But then if you go with the Aqua Jet option, you can always just switch in your Gastrodon, soak up that Aqua Jet with the Storm Drain, and then mm. you still don't get that, that Steam Engine boost. So it's incredibly awkward for Michael if he still opts to go for that uh, Colossal route. Uh, probably needs to... to uh, if, he, if he's bringing the Colossal, maybe leave it in the back and try and set it up uh, later in the game, maybe once the Zashian is been dealt with uh, but otherwise maybe needs to go with a different route a uh, different approach to this game because uh, colossal is incredibly awkward to set up with a faster zashian than dragapult and a gastrodon that can redirect the aqua jet yeah indeed and it's not even like uh, the amoongus on michael's side of the field is going to be doing too much work against something like gastrodon uh, it used to be known for running things like energy ball and giga drain uh, that would be able to remove that gastrodon from play or at least do a lot of work in in trying to do so but uh, not so much these days uh, players tending to opt for more supportive sets and um, so there's not uh, you know there's not a, a great deal of options that uh, Michael has for this for dealing with that Gastrodon that's causing so many problems. But here we are going into the next game now. Uh, we'll see how these players have started to adjust. But we'll see Michael's team coming out first. He is bringing the Incineroar, which is a switch up from the N1, uh, paired with that Zashian coming in in the lead this time round. And of course, Zashian on. Uh, Guillermo's side paired with that Gastrodon just to make sure that Colossal is under threat uh, as early as possible. Yeah, so uh, quite a nice switch up for the Incineroar here, being able to reduce the, the damage output from the opposing Zashian uh, with that Intimidate. Uh, but Gastrodon coming out here straight away as a lead uh, to be able to threaten down both the Incineroar and the Zashian here with an Earth Power. Uh, maybe even could go for a Dynamax to go for Max Quakes, and that may be enough to take out take the knockout. On the Zashian, but then you do do uh, commit your Dynamax very early and leave yourself mm. open something like a parting shot that would reduce your your special attack down. So, uh, still quite a nice lead for for the Incineral here, still exerting the fake out pressure. Certainly, but Zashian's not going to be feeling that fake out pressure this time. I'm going to be switching out into the Dragapult. Uh, and the Zashians both switching out this time, and Amoongus coming in for Michael uh, instead. So uh, Incineral is going to be going for a... It uh, looks like a parting shot or a uh, fake-out. Either way, it wasn't very effective uh, against that Dragapult switching. Uh, and Earth Power comes in onto the Amoongus, not doing too much damage, and certainly within regenerator range if Michael wants to switch it out. Yeah, one of the nice things about Clear Body, uh, the, you can't have your stats dropped, so if you go for a parting shot into the Dragapult, uh, you can't drop the stats, so you can't tr switch out. So Incineroar is staying here on the field, uh, but getting the Amoongus in means that you do start to threaten with those spores, and we do know it's got the Cobra Berry as well, so if the Dragapult mm. wanted to go for a Max Airstream, uh, it would be able to, to survive that with the with the Cobra Berry. But with the extra chip it's just taken from the Gastrodon, uh, maybe close whether it's going to be in range of an Airstream or an Earth Power, but we're not going to see an Airstream at all this turn. No, we're not. We're just going to see that Dragapult coming straight back out again in favor of that Rotom Heat. Uh, could be uh, holding something like Safety Goggles, which would protect it from any spores coming out from the Amoongus. A uh, parting shot looking like it's going into the Gastrodon, but Gastrodon protects and it uh, looks like it protects from something like a spore coming out from that Amoongus. So a uh, great turn there for Guillermo. It uh, looks like uh, he's put himself in a great position to just uh, put pressure on that Amoongus this turn. 
Yeah, and this seems like a, a pretty free nasty plot if the, the Rotom is carrying it, and you do often carry safety goggles on Rotom, uh, because it is a very nice answer to opposing Sun teams as well, so uh, we'll have to see if the Rotom is carrying that here, uh, whether it fears the Amoongus spores or not, and if it is carrying the safety goggles, it's a very free nasty plot. If it's not carrying the safety goggles, it's going to be incredibly awkward to set up the, uh, to set up the nasty <laughs> plot because of the spawn, but it looks like we're seeing that nasty plot. Yeah, Nasty Pot going up there, raising the Rotom's special attack by two stages. We finally see the parting shot in turn three, and that is going into the Rotom, so uh, dropping it to one stage of increased special attack, and Incineroar going back to Michael uh, in favor of a Noah Pokemon. We'll have to wait to see what that is. Uh, but of course, the Gastrodon here, more crucially, hasn't protected so far, so could be in danger of a Spore coming out. Dragapult is coming in for Michael instead of that Incineroar. We see an Earth Power into that slot, so Dragapult having to take nearly half of its HP damage for its troubles, and of course that Spore coming out onto the Gastrodon, so uh, going to be quite crucial that the Gastrodon went first, as it's going to be taking a nap for a little bit longer. Dragapult's most likely going to be the Pokemon that Michael wants to Dynamax in this game, and it's taken almost half HP from that Earth Power on the Switch in, so uh, still quite awkward for that Dragapult. Uh, still could go on the offensive here and try and do some good damage to this Rotom, as it's not threatened too much by the Rotom, even with the Nasty Plot. It wouldn't be doing as much damage uh, as you would like, but still could threaten it uh, a reasonable amount. If it's It must be carrying those safety goggles if it doesn't care about the spore from the Amoongus there. Uh, so mm. it still wouldn't be able to be affected by any Rage Powders, would still be able to target down this Dragapult. We'll have to see if the Dragapult does opt for the Dynamax this turn. It could still switch out and preserve itself for later, uh, but uh, most likely going to be the Dynamax Pokemon, because we haven't seen that Colossal at all. We've seen all four Pokemon, and it's usually going to be the Dragapult that would be the Dynamax here, but Amoongus is going to be switching out, resetting that Intimidate and getting some Regenerator going. It is indeed, and that Incineroar is going to be coming in, intimidating these two special attackers, so not going to be making too much impact, but does bring the fake out onto the field, and of course, isn't threatened so much by that Gastrodon being asleep, uh, not able, certainly in its guaranteed sleep turn uh, that we're in now, uh, to get any damage off onto the field. But we do see Dragapult coming onto the field for Michael's side. Uh, he's going to be starting going on the offensive, and even though it's taken a little bit of damage, deciding that he's got enough HP to uh, make the most of his Dragapult here. And of course, another Dynamax, likely going to be that Rotom, Jamie. Yeah, it looks like it. So I'm going to try and make use of the of the Nasty Plot boost that it's, it's got and be able to do some nice damage here. May be able to um, do, do enough damage to the Dragapult since it's taken so much damage already. Uh, the Nasty Plot boost effectively cancelling out the not very effectiveness. Certainly, and uh, this... Uh, Dragapult going straight for a man fa Max Phantasm into the Rotom, doing quite a lot of damage there, just taking it to just over half health, uh, and of course dropping the defense of both Rotom and Gastrodon. If that Gastrodon stays on the field and that Rotom, it may be quite consequential for that Zacian in the back. But of course Max Flare does go out into the Dragapult, so it does quite a lot of damage, doesn't quite pick up the knockout though, so these all of these Pokemon are going to stay on the field for just that little bit longer and of course now the incineroar as well is going to be able to take advantage of those defense drops coming out from the max phantasms and the max phantasm means that the rotom would probably be in range of another one uh, because uh, you've got the decreased stages of defense now uh, we have seen that there's the life orb on the dragapult as well so it's going to be doing increased damage here and uh, not so not carrying that focus sash uh, opting for the increased damage outputs uh, which were came back to bite him in the game one but it's doing a lot of damage in this game too uh, almost, mm. almost doing half to the Rotom, but should be able to knock it out after that so after that defense drop certainly and knocking it out it shall be doing uh, that Rotom taking another max phantasm won't be launching out any more uh, moves in this game as it goes uh, gets knocked out and goes back to its trainer uh Guillermo is going to have to bring in one of his other Pokemon, but of course we've seen the Zashian that he has in the back will be faster than that low health Dragapult. Of course we're seeing a parting shot yet again coming out from Michael, uh, opting to really cycle through that uh, Incineroar as much as he can, make sure that Gastrodon is as, uh, let's say, a little bit more useless than uh, Guillermo probably wants it to be on the field, but uh, Mundus coming back in now. Uh, doesn't look like he's got the uh, Colossal in the back actually at all, so uh, that Oh, that parting shot wasn't enough to protect the Dragapult uh, Gastrodon does wake up now gonna be knocking out the uh, Dragapult on Michael's side of the field with that earth power so big knockout there um, It managed to get two of its Dynamax moves off, but not the third 
Yeah, so effectively trading Dynamaxes here and knocking out the Rotom, but then the Gastron did manage to wake up. If it would have stayed asleep, then the Amoongus uh, would have come in to redirect any moves from either the either the Gastron or whatever comes in for Guillermo's side of the field. And it would have allowed the Dragapult to have fire up one more max move, but unfortunately uh, for Michael, the Gastron did wake up, so was able to take that knockout. And now the, the Dragapult has come in uh, for Guillermo's side. No access to Dynamax, so Dragapult is in a bit more of an old position, uh, since you do so often want to be Dynamaxing the Dragapult. And the Zashian on, on Michael's side of the field is still going to be threatening some good damage into that Dragapult, but Gastron is still in a reasonable position, but still open to the spores that can come out from the Amoongus. And Amoongus not really threatened too much by the Dragapult as well, because uh, you can't ac have access to any of the any of the max moves. Uh, Dragon Darts won't be doing too much damage, but it will, it will take both Dragon Darts if the dra Dragapult did opt for that, mm. like, that Fairy typing on the Zashian. So it's yep. still be reasonable damage, but probably not enough uh, to knock out the Amoongus uh, with an Earth Power from the Gastron as well. So something might be going to sleep there. Indeed, but the Gastron won't be going to sleep. It is switching out for the uh, Zashian, resetting all of those uh, special attack and special defense, uh, sorry, attack and special uh, attack drops that it had from all of those parting shots that came earlier in the game. We see Rage Powder coming out for the uh, Amoongus, and not actually going to affect Dragon Darts. Both uh, Dragon Darts are going to be going into Amoongus regardless because of Zashian's fairy typing. And a substitute coming out from that Zashian on Michael's side of the field uh, good to know that the uh, Zashian is indeed slower than Dragapult on Guillermo's side of the field. Yeah, so uh, the Michael opting for for a slower Zashian than Dragapult so that he can make use of the, the defense drops. But a little bit of a missed opportunity there from Michael. Uh, the Rage Power didn't uh, achieve anything thanks to the Dragon Darts. It would have uh, hit the, the Amoongus for both times regardless. So an opportunity missed there to go for a sport onto either the Zashian switch in or the Dragapult. And now the Amoongus is switching out, so there's still going to be no sleep on, on Guillermo's side of the field. Certainly not, but there is going to be some Intimidate coming in, and the Zashian is going to feel that somewhat. Uh, not going to be affecting the Dragapult because of that clear body ability, but uh, yes, the Incineral coming in uh, will be able to take a Behemoth Blade, uh, but in fact, it's the Zashian attacking the Zashian this turn, uh, so that is going to be a substitute broken there for Michael's uh, Zashian. As the uh, Will-O-Wisp comes out there, uh, wow, that's a great move, uh, being able to knock out the substitute from the Zashian, uh, make it vulnerable to status, and then to be able to status it. So, a uh, great move from that from uh, Guillermo and the Zashian, even though it's got a raised uh, raised attack stat, with that burn, it isn't going to be doing too much damage with the Behemoth Blade onto Guillermo Zashian uh, on his side of the field. Yeah, now, now we see why uh, Michael went for that Rage Powder, because it is an open team sheet format. Uh, they didn't know. Uh, Michael would have known that there is that Word Wisp on the Dragapult, so wanting to redirect that Word Wisp away mm. from the Zashian. So uh, opting not to go for the Spore that turn, really, really uh, crucial there, because now the Zashian was able to just go for that uh, breaking the substitute with the Behemoth Blade so that the Word Wisp could connect with the Zashian. If one of the Pokemon would have been asleep on Guillermo's side of the field, if the Zashian was asleep from a Spore, you couldn't Word Wisp the the behind the substitute of the Zashian. The Dragapult's asleep there isn't even an option for us that turn. So a very crucial um, choice not to spoil there for Michael. Indeed, and uh, Zashian coming out there for Guillermo, bringing that all-important Gastrodon back onto the field as Fake Out lands into the Gastrodon switch in. A little bit of chip damage, but not really too relevant as a uh, Dragapult on Guillermo's side of the field does go for a Max Phantasm, disappears from the field. It uh, looks like a attack there from Zashian went into uh, the Dragapult slot, but unfortunately didn't do any damage. Yeah, Phantom Force uh, disappearing from the field so that you can avoid all the attacks and Behemoth Blade targeting into that Phantom Force now should be targeting down that Zashian and you can't protect from it, you're going to guarantee that slot is going to be hit by the Phantom Force so quite a nice position for Guillermo, you've got the Burn Zashian uh, in it, and the Incineroar against the Gastron, Gastron's at full HP, it's looking in a really nice position as well and Phantom Force is going to do some nice damage to either the Zashian uh, or the Amoongus that could switch in for that Zashian as well so uh, really nice position for Guillermo. Uh, the damage output has really been reduced, and the Zashin leaving the field as well means that no damage is coming out from that uh, this turn. No, it's certainly not, and Amoongus is going to be probably taking that Mac, uh, not Max Phantasm, Phantom Force. Uh, we're not, we haven't got any Dynamax right at the moment. Uh, we do see a Darkest Lariat coming out from the Incineroar, replying with quite a bit of damage onto the Dragapult, but not enough to pick up the KO, and Amoongus is surviving on very low health. 
uh, from the Earth power. So uh, quite a lot of damage on Amoongus. Uh, if the Amoongus now switches, it's going to be recovering a little bit, but Zashian's possibly going to have to take more damage for its troubles. Yes, so there's not much damage left on Michael's side of the field. The Zashian being burned means it's not going to be doing too much. Uh, the Incineroar uh, opting for Throat Drop instead of Darkest Lariat, a little bit weaker, but then doesn't uh, ignore those defense drops that could come from the Max Phantasm. So uh, being slightly stronger when you go for Max Phantasm, but uh, maybe the Darkest Lariat with a tiny bit of increased power could have knocked out the Dragapult. Uh, it would have been pretty close if it would have done, but uh, still not able to knock out this Dragapult. Still being able to fire off another Phantom Force. Uh, if it goes into the Amoongus slot, so it would have to switch out into the Zashian to get some Regenerator going. Uh, it's going to get some Regenerator going immediately uh, back into the Zashian, but the Dragapult is still looking in quite a nice position. It's looking in a lovely position, and uh, that's Zashian coming in, raising its attack stat again, which is, uh, as we've seen, not quite crucial enough in this, uh, with the way that it's burnt in this earlier in this match, and uh, Gastrodon just going for a protect here, just making sure that it's not going to be taking any damage as, again, the Dragapult decides to disappear from the field and making sure that it can come back later on. And that Incineroar looks like it targeted again into the Dragapult slot, so uh, Michael just walking into the ammo's moves here. Yeah, there's not really too much that, that Michael can do to, to play around this. You're going to have to take a Phantom Force into that slot. If you can manage to position your Incineroar into that into that slot so it takes the Phantom Force, that's not going to be doing too much damage at all. Uh, but that's going to require a lot of repositioning. You have to switch the Incineroar out. You have to switch it back in on that slot. And instead, you're just going to be taking that Phantom Force on the Zashin and put it very low. Yeah, indeed, very low. Uh, and it's probably going to be knocked out to burn very quickly. We see a... Um, Behemoth Blade going into the Gastrodon, uh, not doing too much damage, and of course, uh, the Darkest Lariat is going to be enough to knock out the Dragapult. Uh, Gastrodon switching up tacks here, attacking the Incineroar instead, getting a critical hit, uh, taking the Incineroar down very low. I think it looks like Guillermo's thinking that he can probably just uh, allow that Zashian to stay on the field. Uh, for as long as it takes to for that burn to do its work of course Sashian coming in for Guillermo uh, now in favor of that Dragapult that just got knocked out I uh, could be intimidated again if Michael repositions but it looks like uh, <laughs> Guillermo has all of the damage uh, potential on his side of the field yeah, we've seen that his Zashian is the fastest Zashian, so it would be able to uh, pick up the knockout on either the Incineroar here with the fighting type move or the Zashian as well. And yeah, it's looking very good for, for Guillermo. Um, you'd be able to take the choice of knockout with your own Zashian, and then the, the Gastron would be able to follow up with an Earth Power to KO uh, the remaining Pokemon. If the Amoongus switches in uh, on a Behemoth Blade that could come out from the Zashian, then that's also going to be KO'd. Uh, no switches, so it looks like there's going to be two KOs this turn certainly does and uh, Incineroar is going to be the first to get knocked out here uh, from that behemoth blade uh, it's going to be Zashian on Michael's side of the field that's going to be following up next with its own behemoth blade uh, we'll see what it targets whether it targets the Gastrodon or the uh, Zashian uh, it does target the Zashian uh, it does quite a bit of damage there uh, fairly respectable given the uh, conditions on the field at the moment but Gastrodon's going to be able to knock out that Zashian uh, and it's going to be Amoongus and um, <laughs> versus Gastrodon and Zashian, and uh, it's not a matchup that's particularly favourable favorable for Michael. No, not at all. Um, the spores won't really help at this point, so uh, it, it, it did come down to that crucial turn of opting to Rage Powder to try and catch the Widow instead of the Spore. If he had gone for the mm. Spore, he would have put himself in a very good position. He would have kept the substitute uh, behind the Zashian and wouldn't have been burned and would have still had a lot of damage output available. Uh, but at this point, Amoongus is really not going to be able to do it, and, and Michael knows it, and Guillermo is going to be able to take this game 2-0. Yeah, congrats and uh, fantastic play from both players here. I really do think that that uh, showcases both the power of Zashian and how it can be trained and uh, just how those speed interactions tend to uh, really make a difference in the games. We saw both the Zashian on Guillermo's side of the field going first, knocking out that Dragapult in game one. And of course, later, if we're talking about speed interactions, the Max Airstream that, it, that uh, Dragapult on Guillermo's side of the field was able to uh, get when uh, to allow that Gastrodon to knock out the... Um, uh, the big rock thing. What's the big rock Colossal. thing called? The Colossal. Yeah, Colossal, oh, that's it. The, the, the really, really um, Gastrodon really, really put a stop to the Colossal. 
uh, completely. Yeah. The, the combination of being able to stop the Dragapults with just a Behemoth Blade because you outspeed, and also stop any Aqua Jets coming out uh, because you can just redirect with Storm Drain, uh, really wasn't the matchup for Colossal, and even when the Colossal wasn't brought, unfortunately, uh, the, the Guillermo was just able to position himself uh, well enough to avoid the Zashin, reduce its damage output, and come out on top. So Guillermo is going to be advancing into the top eight here, so uh, that's going to be it for, for round two. We're going to be coming back shortly with round three, so stay tuned.